On Monday, July 11th, about 150 people participated in the Pat Tillman Legacy Summit Day of Service, doing various restorative projects throughout the Oliver community of East Baltimore, including refurbishing parks, removing trash, and painting murals. Today, we're honored to be with Marie Tillman, the chairman of the board for the Pat Tillman Foundation. Marie, thanks for being here. Thank you. So, what brought you to Baltimore to do this day of community service? I know that you're having a national convention that was held at College Park. Tell us a little bit more about the work of the foundation and what brought you to Baltimore. Yeah, we are having a national summit here this week with all of our Tillman military scholars, which are um, veterans and their dependents that we support through scholarships for higher education. So, we've gathered all of our scholars from across the country here at the University of Maryland, and as part of, you know, what we're doing this week is, is a service project here in Baltimore. So I know you were at College Park and there are tons of communities around College Park where you could have gone. You could have gone to Wheaton, Maryland, you could have gone to a, many, a number of places. Why did you choose Baltimore? You know, this project was, was actually spearheaded by a group of our Tillman scholars okay. and they are very involved in the Baltimore community, so they wanted to really show their community and also have the other scholars participate in, in the project today. So, What are you finding about your time in Baltimore that you might have been a little bit surprised about once you've gotten here to meet some of the people? You know, I didn't actually really know that much about Baltimore before I came, and you know, it's a great community. Obviously, you can see here so many people that have come out to give back and to be a part of this community. It's a great thing to see. So is this a model that you all take wherever you go when you have a conference? It is. It's something that we encourage with our scholars. It's sort of one of the cornerstones of the program in addition to education. It's that giving back in your communities. So we have scholars that are doing these types of things in their communities across the country. That's wonderful. You can really see the energy that they have. The folks are excited. Yeah. It's really great to have people who are outside of Baltimore come in and give back. But it's also setting a model for the folks who are those of us who are here. So the wonderful people that you've partnered with, did you find it easy to partner with folks? Did you, did you find it easy um, to navigate? Definitely. Um, you know, I think that's what's so great about something like this is to bring together a variety of organizations and really magnify the impact that we can all have by working together. Well, I can't thank you enough for thinking of Baltimore and amplifying our city today by bringing your wonderful folks into our midst. Thank you so much for the work that you do nationally and also for amplifying Baltimore. Thank you. We are with Scott Burkholder, Executive Director of the Baltimore Love Project here in the beautiful community of Oliver in East Baltimore. Hi Scott, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So you are a part of this wonderful Pat Tillman Community Day of Service here in the East Baltimore community. You have beautiful murals all over the city. I'm a huge fan. I paste them everywhere and folks are like, oh my god, these are cool murals. So tell us a little bit about the Baltimore Love Project first and then secondly, tell us why you're here today. Uh, the Baltimore Love Project is a citywide street art project. We're putting the word love written out in silhouetted hands on 20 different walls across Baltimore. To date, we've done seven murals. It's the vision of a 2004 MICA graduate named Michael Owen, uh, who's used murals as his form of media for the past seven years. He's done upwards of 40 murals across Baltimore. Uh, really, the vision of the mural is to ask people to stop, think about love, and hopefully act on it. So why did you decide to partner with the Pat Tillman Foundation today? We felt it was a great opportunity to do what our project is all about, which is to love. And Oliver is certainly a neighborhood that we were interested in coming to, just with uh, its geographic location, as well as what's happening here in terms of just the revitalization, a community that in some ways needs love, uh, more so than other parts of Baltimore. But at the same time, uh, just to be affiliated on the ground actually doing something here instead of just talking about it. At the same time, we're doing it with the Pat Tillman Foundation and the Veterans Artist Program from a standpoint of uh, the service that they embody and the recognition that they as an organization get the concept of love. And why not partner with somebody who understands what we're doing and our vision here in Baltimore? So with this and other murals across the city, we know that you're hoping that Baltimoreans see themselves in a more loving way and they love each other a lot more. What is the master plan for the Baltimore Love Project? The master plan is 20 murals across Baltimore, but as a result of doing those 20 murals, we see a litany of responses ranging from individuals who are taking engagement photos in front of the word love um, to scavenger hunts, asking people to love a community around murals to now we're being asked to go to other cities and do love murals and really when you think about our concept, this idea that 
We're putting the same image, same word, same idea in 20 neighborhoods. We're creating the sense of unity, a bond that transcends the distinction in neighborhoods. There's potential to host events where people do a tour of love and see all of Baltimore because we're spread out throughout the city. But beyond that, there's also the notion of unity and unifying this city so that as individuals go from one neighborhood to the next, they can physically see that we're united by just an image or this idea, this concept that's deeper than uh, what may be decisive and stuff that separates us. So we thank you so much, Scott Burkholder, for amplifying Baltimore with love today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Today we are with Earl Johnson, the executive director of One Green Home at a Time in the Alver community of Baltimore, here at the Pat Tillman Community Service Day. Earl, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. So we've been in the Oliver community all day, beautifying this historic community in East Baltimore. Tell us what this project means for this community. Well, it gives us, um, I guess, a head start. Right. You know, it was so much trash, so much litter. A lot of time it comes from outside of the city. People from the county come in, they bring, they dump. People from all over just seem to want to dump in Oliver. Hmm. So we just wanted to give them a, like a head start on being able to maintain a very, a very historic community and keep it really clean. So I know with your organization, One Green Home at a Time, you've made a real investment in this particular community. Tell us a little bit about the history of One Green Home at a Time and why you chose Oliver in East Baltimore to do your work. Well, One Green Home has been around for about almost two years now. Um, we started out just basically lending money to rehabbers to build green homes the way we wanted them built okay. and restoring the Oliver community back to its natural charm. We built historic homes and you know I moved, I moved here myself, I also bought an historic home and what we really just want to do is just keep the neighborhood positive. Right, so you're not a Baltimore native and you and your wife chose to move into Baltimore. Tell us what went into the thought process of you coming into this community a little bit more because I know you have a commitment to Oliver, but tell us kind of the other folks that you're engaging to bring into this community as well. Well, it's about service. So like today, this is the day of service. Me and my wife, we're both veterans. Um, we believe in giving back, you know, not just 10%, not just 15%, but giving 100% every day, all day. And this is why, you know, why we're here. We bring, we brought the Pat Tillman Foundation here, uh, Civic Works. We bring homeowners from all over the country to come live in Baltimore because it's just a great city. And Oliver is just a great neighborhood. So part of one green home at a time, it's not just about building green homes in the community. It's also about creating a sense of community and bringing people from different walks of life into this community. Tell us a little bit about the folks you're recruiting to live in the area. Well, we are recruiting veterans, um, wow. Navy SEALs, um, Spec Ops, Rangers, any combat veteran, any veteran that has served honorably in the military that can come here. We can, we'll finance them to, to live in a house. We'll finance them to build another house, to move in another veteran. Anything that we can do to help veterans who are really like keystones in the community. Right. You know, take over one block at a time from the drug dealers, one block at a time from the criminals. You know, we're just not going to have it in our community, and veterans are known for not, ha not taking crap from anybody. We're seeing a lot of that today with the Pat Tillman Foundation folks. So this is a natural progression for you all to work with them when they came in for their conference. So they said it was really easy to find people to work with in Baltimore. You're, again, not a, a person who is from Baltimore. So have you found it easy to do your work in the city? I, I found it very easy. The city is very, very helpful. Uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, Michael Braverman. He's just, he's a great guy. He, he, he lent us uh, trash cans, uh, equipment, you know, uh, Carl Stokes. Everyone involved in the city has been very, very helpful for us. When we ask for something, they give it to us. And they know that it's, it's for a good cause. That's awesome. So. We are excited that you are amplifying Baltimore this way. We're going to be talking with you a little bit more in the future about One Green Home at a Time and the things that you're doing in historic East Baltimore. And we thank you so much for always amplifying the city. We will always amplify Baltimore. Thank you so much. We are with B.R. McDonald of the Veterans Artist Project. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. It's really a cool collaboration that's happening today. Awesome. And then we also have two young people who have been getting their hands dirty all day. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Kyron. Kyron, and what's your name? Javin. Javin. And Javin, you're with the Baltimore Born Project? Yes. Okay. And you live in this neighborhood, correct? Yeah. Okay, great. 
So we're first we're going to start with uh, BR. Why do this project in this community today? Yeah, well, the Veteran Artist Program is based in Baltimore City, and we have a sister organization called the Sixth Branch. And um, what we do is just really try to um, propel veterans into the for VAP into the mainstream creative arts community and for the Sixth Branch continue service um, right in our own neighborhoods. Right. So we um, really what's brought us all together is mil as military veterans, and we partner with the Pat Tillman Foundation and other local groups. Baltimore born and one green home at a time to really try to make an impact here in Oliver by bringing what we have about 200 volunteers today. That's incredible. So tell me specifically why your particular organization decided to collaborate and in what way this is going to have an impact on the work that you do in the future in Baltimore. So the Veteran Artist Program specifically what we collaborated on is a mural. Right. Uh, some of the Baltimore born students helped design the mural um, that's over on Oliver. Um, and uh, it's a really cool collaboration between the Baltimore Love Project, Baltimore Born, and the Veteran Artist Program. And so that's obviously a lasting impact for the community. But what we hope it does is, is to help you know, blur the neighborhoods in the communities in Baltimore City sure. so that we can continue going into each other's neighborhoods and, and making an impact on each other. That's absolutely right. Sometimes we work within silos and we want to break those up a little bit. That's right. So you are with the Baltimore Born Project. So what brought you out here today? Okay, it brought me out here today because I just want to help the community clean up. Okay, and so one of the skill sets that you're learning today from the Baltimore Born Project, what, what, are, what are some of the things that you're learning by participating in today? Uh, like, like... Community service? Yes, like community service mm -hmm. and uh, the... What's that word? Uh, giving back to your community? Yes, giving back to my community and helping others clean up. How does that make you feel? Good. Why does it make you feel good, though? Because, because I'm just trying to help the community clean up, and then I just like seeing people smile when they, when they see their community look good. You're seeing a lot of people smile today. You know, I know that you are from this neighborhood, right? This is your neighborhood. How do you feel seeing all of these people that you've never seen before in your neighborhood? I'm um, good. So you're helping out today. What did you do today? You helped clean. Did you work on the mural as well? Mm -mm. No, but you're going to go over to the mural later, right? Yes. Okay, so when you were cleaning up your own community, how did that feel? Good. Do you do that often when, out, when out all these cameras and all these people aren't around? Mm-hmm. So what does it mean to you that folks from outside of your community have come in to help you clean it up? Does it make you feel better about your community? Yes. Does it make you feel like other people have an investment in your community? Yes. How do you feel about being a resident here? Tell us what you love about being an Oliver resident. I get to go to school and I get to play ba basketball. You like playing basketball and going to school here? Yep. Okay. And how do you feel about all of these adults from all over the country being here? Isn't it cool? Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. So today we've seen so much. We've seen people cleaning up gardens and cleaning up alleyways and picking up trash and building murals. What do you think the lasting impact, after all of these people are packed up and after all the cameras are gone, what do you think the lasting impact will be besides all of us getting a tan? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, a little bit of hydration maybe yeah. immediately. Um, no, I think what we want to do is, and the real effort here is not to be, to be come in, make something happen, and then leave. Right. I mean, there's a lot of local organizations, a lot of our community organizations involved, and then Baltimore City organizations involved. Um, my big passion is to continue the service as a military veteran. Right. And that's what you see here today. Um, Earl Johnson, who's with the One Green Home at a Time, is an Army Ranger. And we're starting to find that that service as a military veteran is being continued, even though we're technically out of service, right? right. So that's what I hope to continue, is just a continued effort, a s intentional effort in the community, just to build opportunity. You know, we love working with the students from Bourne and the, you know, the kids in the community, because it represents reaching out Mm -hmm. And we can, you know, talk to each other and figure out what each other needs. And, you know, we're here for making a change. For you two, when you see adults, what do you ask of adults to, to model to you so that you can kind of go out in the world and, and be better people? Be a good role model and follow directions and always listen to your teacher. Okay. And what about you? What do you look for from, what kind of advice do you look for from adults? Keep the world clean. Keep the world, I, hey, I think that's a great place to end. Thank you all so much for amplifying the Oliver community and these young people's lives, but also for amplifying Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you.
Today we are in beautiful East Baltimore in the Oliver community at the Pat Tillman Day of Service with Dominique Foxworth, Baltimore Raven great, and more importantly, the founder of Baltimore Born. Dominique, how are you today? Fantastic. It is hot and sunny and we are sweaty. He's used to sweating on the field. I'm not used to sweating at all, but I will sweat any day to amplify Baltimore. So today we have 200 people in the East Baltimore community of Oliver to clean it up, to make an incredible mural, and to beautify this community. So tell me a little bit, first of all, about Baltimore Born and why you decided to found your organization. Well, Baltimore Born is a program for uh, boys in the Baltimore neighborhood, Oliver neighborhood specifically, and we're helping them. The goal is to help them improve their reading, writing, and critical thinking skills and become the young men, the successful young men that they deserve to be. That's awesome. So how long, how long have you been doing this work? How old is the organization? The organization is two years old. We have two cohorts of a sixth grade group and a seventh grade group, and we hope to add another next year. How many young men are you working with now? Uh, right now we're a little over 30, and we hope to add 15 next year. Right. So you have them with you today. So what was the purpose of you connecting with these people, with all the organizations who are working with this effort today? What was the connection about? Well, uh, this is our community, like I said. The Oliver community is where these guys are, so an opportunity for them to take pride in our community and help clean it up and help beautify it is important to them. But also, I had an ulterior motive, just get them around these other adults who, who, uh, who show the importance of being um, accountable to your community, and I want them to see this example and grow from it and learn from it. So what do you expect for them to get today? Well, just being, like I said, being around these adults who have a, a civic duty and understand that, I want them to appreciate that and understand that that's part of being a young man. Mm -hmm. So I saw a lot of excitement from some of the young people. So are we going to be able to speak with a couple of them today? Absolutely. I can start sending them over. They love the camera. Oh, they love the camera. Of course they love it. Well, Dominique, we thank you so much for your commitment, not only to our Ravens, which we love, but your commitment to Baltimore is very important, the work that you're doing. So we're absolutely pleased that you're amplifying Baltimore. Thanks so much. Thank you. Today we are with one of Baltimore Born's finest, Treshawn Brown, and he's here to volunteer today for the Pat Tillman Day of Service in the beautiful Oliver community of Baltimore. How are you, Treshawn? I'm fine. Why are you here today? I just like giving back to my community, and Baltimore Born told me a long time ago that we were going to be doing some community work, and I was very excited because I like giving back to my community and I like helping and I like you know giving back to people. So what did you get out of Baltimore Born? You said you've been a part of this cohort. What are you learning from Dominique and all the wonderful folks who are working with you as mentors at Baltimore Born? I learned a lot. I learned to sometimes you have to just be more giving and caring and I learned that Sometimes you, when you feel down, you have to just keep knowing that you are strong and you can believe in yourself and you can accomplish anything. I believe that just hearing you talk. So are you excited today? You're going to work on a mural project, right? Yes. So where's the mural? Uh, the mural, I think we're going to be doing it in the house and uh, we're doing it with the Love Project. The Baltimore Love Project. The Baltimore Love yes. Project. And we had a meeting about it and I was really inspired because they don't just do it to get art out there or get money for it. They do it because they want to help the community and they want to spread a word and be kind. So I will, I'm definitely excited to be a part of it. All right, so before we conclude this interview, I want to know the thing that you love the most about Baltimore. I love the, the thing I love the most about Baltimore Born is that we're a family and that you can talk to anyone about any problems and anyone everyone's there to help you and there's never an issue between any of the boys and me because we're like brothers and it's a very like family oriented program that's wonderful well we know already from this interview that you're going to be a future shining star for baltimore so thank you so much for giving us your time and thank you for amplifying baltimore Trisha. you're welcome have fun today i'm going to come and help you yay all right bye, bye. Oh, oh, oh. We're two of the volunteers at the Pat Tillman Community Service Day. We're here with Sharon Prout from Stevenson University and Ken Annexstein from DLA Piper. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for having us. Happy Glad to, to be, be here. here. Yeah. So why come out on what feels like the hottest day God ever created <laughs> to clean up beautiful historic 
the Oliver community in Baltimore. What made you come out today? I feel like we can make a real difference. When you get your hands dirty, you're making a real difference. And I'm hopeful that um, all of the work, and it's, it's a huge group of people that are here today, is going to make a big difference. There's going to be a lot of pride, not only from the people that were hands-on with this project, but for anybody that's looking in and can see this happen. That's awesome. What about you? Well, I wanted to work on my son's hand to start with, but in all, in all, in all seriousness, um, I, you know, I wanted to help a community that could use a little help. And it's easy to go out and pick weeds in my own backyard and I'll be done in an hour, but here, you know, just working for two hours, even if I put a little dent in it, I feel like when somebody walks by here, they'll, they'll see that some people cared and maybe it'll help people care about themselves more. So the two of you are in a program, the Greater Baltimore Leadership Program, and you've been doing some work within the East Baltimore community, and I know that you have a strong connection and, and attachment to it, even though this is not your community of origin or the community where you live. What would you say to other folks who don't live in inner city communities about making connections with communities that are not their home communities and helping out communities to kind of amplify what's good about those communities and bringing their talents in? When I think about that, I think about connecting with what resonates with you personally, mm -hmm. and everybody has something that speaks to them. Right. And I think sometimes the roadblock is that they just feel like, oh, but I couldn't do that, or right. oh, I just can't get there, or oh, you know, I can't see myself doing that. See yourself doing it. It's incredibly easy to see yourself doing it. Just throw yourself in and get in there and get ready, and you are going to be welcomed. We feel incredibly welcomed right. in this community today. We feel embraced. We feel like uh, everybody's come together here like a family, right. and that's an easy step. So it gives back to us, but at the same time, it's work that really resonates with us, and everybody out there has something that is meaningful and passionate for them. Right. What about you, Ken? Well, you know, I feel like this is part of my community. I live in Baltimore City as well, and we all root for the same football team and <laughs> perhaps the same baseball team in any given year. But And so to sort of help bridge those gaps that maybe are artificial or there are just barriers that have been built up over many, many years, many, many generations, but we're all citizens of the same city, and so why not try to reconnect some of that fabric? Yeah, we're all humans. Absolutely, we're all human. So you've had young people, you've had people from outside the city who've come in. What do you think they're seeing today? What do you think they're experiencing as they've come to this community that many of them have never seen before, never heard of? What do you think that they're feeling about the city of Baltimore from this experience? And what are you feeling about the city of Baltimore from this experience? There's a ton of people that care. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of people that just care. And um, it's people that probably surprised each other by saying, hey, I know you, or right. hey, why are you here? That kind of mm -hmm. thing. And it's mm -hmm. the connection is they care. Right. And uh, they care about this neighborhood, but maybe not specifically the neighborhood. It doesn't have to be that. They care about Baltimore. They care about the region. They care about the world that they're going to leave. Um, they want to leave a legacy, and everybody here is really connected in that way. Yeah. Well, I think it dovetails with a lot of what you personally are involved in, which is trying to get different constituencies from around the community speaking to each other. And so I was working with a, with a gentleman who is involved with civic works and lives near uh, Morgan, Morgan State. And we otherwise might not cross paths too often, but here we were helping each other lift dirt and weeds into a trash bag and just getting to know each other. And I think that's an invaluable experience for us to, yeah. again, bridge that gap within the community. Well, I can't thank you guys enough for coming out, getting your hands dirty, literally getting hands yeah. dirty Woo. and Under Armour shirts dirty <laughs> and rocking the Ravens gear. We had Dominique Foxworth here with Baltimore Burn earlier. So we can't thank you enough for being a, a, a personal example of how individuals can come together with groups and organizations to amplify the city. So thank you so much for being with us today. With a fellow Amplify. classmate yeah. with GBC Gotta leadership, thank you for having us. Thank April. you for appreciate coming it. out. We really appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks thank for you. amplifying Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you were inspired by this collaboration between a national foundation and local organizations who came together to improve a Baltimore neighborhood. And know this example will certainly encourage similar collaborations in the future. Remember, we the people of Baltimore possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, each of us has the power to create the city we want. With this power, I hope you will always choose to amplify Baltimore. Oh, oh, oh.